What's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this Isaiah Rashad from the Garden music video featuring Lil Uzi. Omar Jones directed it, and in the music video, there's like this zooming in effect with the black and white scenes. And it's super fire. A lot of people have actually DM'd me on it already. So I figured I might as well make a tutorial on it and get something similar. If you're new here, what's good? My name is Brian. I make music video tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. It's free and we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Also, if you want to support the channel and get some really fire music video editing assets, I'll have my website linked down below where I have my packs and presets. Like I said, it's the best way to support the channel. It's really appreciated. But yeah, let's get into this video and break down this effect. Like I said, here's the effect where it's zooming in between the black and white scenes. Super cool transition. I think it's pretty unique and I haven't seen really much like it. So let's go ahead and kind of figure out how to stitch these clips together and make this transition. All right, so now that we're in After Effects, I want to show you the version that I made just practicing it. I kind of added a little bit extra stuff to it and kind of made it a little bit more unique, but it's generally the same concept and I'm going to be showing you how to do this. And it's a lot shorter of a transition. I just want to show you the concepts, but basically just duplicate that over and over again. Also, if you want to follow along, I have the project files linked down below for my Patreon supporters. So check that out. So first off, what you're going to want is some rotoscoped out clips. In the music video, they have these scenes here. I'll show you an example. They have these scenes in these white rooms, and I'm pretty sure that's what he used for all of the rotoscoped out layers. Obviously, there's a color gradient and stuff on here already, but makes it a little harder to rotoscope out. You don't really focus on how the rotoscope itself looks. Not too worried about that. You just need some kind of clips. I guess you don't really need like a white room or a green screen or anything, but it does definitely help out a lot. So you can see here's the footage I have. Rotoscopes are a little rough, but it's basically just the footage that you need. You can see we have all these different clips and then one final last one here. And there's just a few things you need to do to set up for the effect. I'm going to go ahead down here to the bottom left. You can see my cursor. Go to proportional grids. That's going to make it a lot easier to make these boxes and stuff symmetrical and easier to zoom into. And then after we have that rotoscoped out clip, I'm gonna go up here and go to the rectangle tool. In the effect he does in the music video, he uses all of these tools. I think he even uses the pen tool to create kind of unique ones. But I think we're just gonna focus mostly on the rectangle tool for this tutorial, just because it's easy and the concepts are the same for all the other shapes. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make some kind of box. I'm gonna go ahead and go start here and make a box just like this. You can see I'm being proportional to the center of the frame. So I have two boxes to the right and two boxes to the left. And then I did do a little bit unsymmetrical here. I did three down and two up. It doesn't really matter too much. It just makes it a little bit easier if it is symmetrical. But I think that looks really good. And you can see when we play that, it's cool because Isaiah goes out of the frame. I think that looks really nice. And then Uzi on the quad. Then I'm gonna go ahead and trim that shape layer by holding by holding control shift D to split it and then I'm going to delete the extra part right click and pre-compose and then I'm going to move all attributes to the new composition and adjust the duration of the time spent of selected layers and then name this quad and you can go ahead and uncheck the open new composition because we're not even going to go inside of it right now and then I want to scale this down a little bit to kind of start off how he did I'm going to click S on my keyboard for the scale and I'm going to scale it down to something I like or something like that looks good to me and I'm also going to hit P on my keyboard to bring up the position and I'm going to line up all these clips with this line right here so I think that's a really important part of this tutorial is having all the clips kind of start on the same line that way there's like a perspective and when it zooms in they kind of just match together better you'll see what I'm saying in a little bit once we do a few more clips click S and then I'm going to keyframe that at the start I'm going to go all the way to the end and then I'm going to go 10 frames before the end and then keyframe it so it fills up the whole entire screen. So 200 should work here. You can see it's a little bit unproportional, but for right now, it doesn't really matter too much. And then I'm going to go the extra 10 frames and make it 220. That way it moves a little bit extra in those last 10 frames. It kind of zooms into it. And you can see how that's looking. I'm going to actually have it start off. So when I'm actually going to have it start off, so it starts 10 frames delayed. We can now see it stays still for a little bit and then it starts moving and obviously it moves really fast and out of nowhere it kind of starts going fast i'm going to highlight all these keyframes click f9 on my keyboard or you can right click and go to keyframe assistant and easy ease and then i'm going to go to the graph editor here click on scale and then i'm going to make it so it starts off really really slow so dragging this keyframe part all the way to the right and then i'm also going to do the exact same thing with the second part now we can see when we play that and then I'm gonna go ahead and go to this enable motion blur option here, turn that on, and then also turn that on for the pre-comp. If you don't see that, go ahead and go to toggle switches and modes in the bottom left until you see that option and then click it. 
that's just gonna give it a little motion blur. And then if you wanna change the intensity of that blur, you can go up here to composition, composition settings, then go to advanced and change the shutter angle. 180 is like the most natural looking, but the higher you bring it up and then the lower you bring it, the less motion blur is gonna have. So I'm gonna keep it right around 180. That looks good to me. And then let's right click down here in the bottom left and we're gonna create a new solid. I'm gonna make it a white background, drag it below that layer. That way the background is white. And by the way, if you want to see this checkerboard and see what's transparent and not when you're working, go ahead and click this transparency, toggle transparency grid option. That way it makes it a lot easier to see what you're working with. Now we can see we have it start off and it zooms in and it's looking good so far. Now we just need another clip. So I'm just gonna drag the clip over right where it starts on that keyframe. We can adjust this later. Right click, go to pre-compose and let's name this standing. And then I'm gonna actually click open new composition here. Then let's go ahead and click scale on Isaiah here. Scale it down so it fits the size of the comp a little bit better, kind of how we had before. And then I'm just gonna do my best job making him in the center. Pretty good, I think I'm just gonna move him over a little bit. So he's generally in the center here. And then let's go ahead and make that same rectangle tool. By the way, if you wanna change the color, you can go up here to fill and change the color. So since last time it was a black, I'm gonna go ahead and do white. You just kind of alternate back and forth. And then I also just always keep the stroke on zero for this effect. I think it looks the best. And then let's go ahead and make that same rectangle that we had before and bring that behind. And that looks good. And then for this effect, if you want it to kind of zoom in from the same perspective and have it a lot more of like a consistent theme, I go to right at the start. So see how quad is started at 33%. I'm gonna go to the standing clip that we just made, make it 33%. And then I'm gonna match it in the exact same spot for position. We're not keyframing anything right now but you'll see how this helps out in a second. Just roughly the exact same spot. Then click scale, start it off at zero and then scale it up to where we get to the last frame right here. Scale it up so it fits, so it takes up the whole entire screen. Something like that right there. And then go to the end and scale it up that extra 20 frames. So 221 and we're gonna scale it at the end. Now you can see it's going to be coming from the same perspective, but it actually comes out so fast. And that is because we haven't used the graph editor yet. So highlight all the keyframes, click F9. Then let's go to the graph editor, click on scale, and then do that exact same thing where we drag it all the way to the right, drag it all the way to the right for this keyframe as well. And then let's go back and see what that looks like. And that's looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and turn on that motion blur for that layer as well. And then let's do a one last clip here, going right clicking, pre-compose. We'll name this one Uzi, standing open it up in a new pre-comp. And then again, since we were just on that white layer, let's go ahead and make this one black. Do the exact same size square, drag that below. Then I'm gonna scale Uzi down a little bit and depending on how he moves, let's make him in the center. That actually looks good. Close that, go to scale, do that 33% and then go to that one frame where it started off, click position and then drag it down so it matches. And go to wherever you want it to start. And then if you have it start at the exact same frame distance, it'll be pretty consistent. So here's 10 frames and then go another 10 frames. Go ahead and click scale, keyframe it and bring it to zero. Then go ahead and go to right before the last frame, how we did last time, scale it up till it fills the frame completely. And then let's go ahead and go an extra whatever amount of frames and then scale it up by an extra 20 pixels. You don't have to do these exact values or whatever. I think it just helps out a little bit. Go ahead and go to that motion blur layer, highlight all our keyframes, F9, or easy use them. Go to that graph editor, click on scale. Go ahead and drag that, just how we did last time. We can see we got a really similar effect. Now there's some things that we can do to kind of spice this up, change it to whatever you want. If you want to go back in this layer and instead of use a square, you can go ahead and now replace it with a circle. When you go ahead and add these different shapes and stuff, I like to generally keep it the same kind of perspective that we were using before. And just know that if you bring the circle, say it's out of the composition, it's gonna be cut off there. I like to make it a good circle like this then drag it behind. And now you can replace all these shapes with whatever layers you want. I think just keeping the square at the beginning makes it a little easier to follow and kind of figure out what you're doing. But now you can go ahead and change it to a star really whatever you want. You can use the pen tool to make your own layers too. Easier if you turn on the grid so we can line this up properly and turn off the rectangle if you want. And now you can see if you do these different shapes, it does make it a little bit more complex. So just keep that in mind. But 
generally if you play around with it for long enough you'll kind of understand what you need to do to make these look good together and then let's go back and do maybe a circle for this one and we can turn off that rectangle And since we changed this to a circle and it doesn't actually fill out the whole entire thing, go ahead and actually show you a different way you can do this. Instead of using a shape layer, let's go ahead and duplicate the video layer that we just have. And then on the bottom one, remove the rotoscope. And then if you're selected on this layer and go to the ellipse tool, you can see that we can make something similar, but actually with the actual video footage. And then if you go to the mass path, you can move around this to whatever you want. Let's go ahead and center it up a little bit. Go back to the tutorial, see what we got so far. And that's cool, but let's go ahead and animate this so it looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna go to the mask layer, go to expansion, and I'm gonna keyframe it at the beginning all the way so you can't see it. And let's go to, if you go back into the tutorial, you can go to that exact frame that you're at where it ends. Double click on that, and it's gonna bring you to that frame in the pre comp. And then let's bring that up to the full circle and then go 10 frames, then expand it all the way. And then you can also easy ease them and turn on the motion blur on that layer. Now we can see what we got here. You can see how the circle grows behind them. And you can do this with all these different shapes as well. That's kind of how you like finish the effect, I would say. Go ahead and make this layer, the middle layer, a circle. So it matches all the other clips. That way they're all circles. So you can kind of see what you do. I think it is easier to pull off the effect if they're all a consistent shape. Obviously in the music video, he didn't do that, but he probably spent a lot of time finessing it and making it look good. And if you bring up the scale, you can see how this time, since it's the circle, it doesn't fill out the whole frame, kind of how we had with the square. So let's go ahead and go into the pre-comp on that exact frame and go to the ellipse and then go to transform, keyframe it, and let's go to 10 frames to the right or all the way to the end of the composition, scale it up all the way. And again, easy easing these, also turning on that motion blur layer. And now we can see how that fills out the circle and makes the transition a lot smoother. And let's go ahead and do that for this layer as well. So again, just going to right where it ends, going to the ellipse tool, transform, scale, and 10 frames, put the scale all the way up. And then you can easy ease them, add that motion blur back in. And then when you go back in, you can see it scales in all the way. And there's so many different things you can do with this technique. Obviously, the more time you spend on this effect, it's gonna look better. He used a bunch of different concepts. He was doing this effect. For example, I'll go back into it. He used rectangles, squares, circles. He like duplicated the clip up and down. A bunch of different things, like went between his legs. He was kind of just using the footage the best way he could. He did one where it was like horizontal. These are all different things you can do, but honestly, I think just knowing how to do the concept itself and making it kind of infinitely looping is the biggest part of it. And then I think just letting your creativity go and just making different shapes and using the clips differently together is gonna to really help out this effect. But yeah guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this tutorial. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff, come say what's up, join the Discord, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all the different social medias, I'll have them linked down below. Also, one last thing before we go, if you wanna support the channel and get some packs and presets for music video editing, you can go ahead and check out my website, I'll have it linked down below. But yeah guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one.